Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Friday, the 4th of August. 4th of August, if you're following in the book, you might like to look up halfway through amongst the saints' days and festivals, minor adjustments and raising Jean-Baptiste Vianney, who we're commemorating today. Also in the book, you'll find the majority of the words towards the beginning after prayer during the day in the morning and evening prayer during ordinary time section, morning prayer on Friday. The words may also be downloaded as apps for Apple or Android devices or viewed online at the Church of England's website or Arima's Daily Prayer. You're welcome to join us in the building, live and direct, or by Zoom, the code on the Bright Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, and the audio will be on my Dominic Dobel YouTube channel directly. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. A song of triumph. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today ye would listen to his voice, Harden not your hearts as at Meribah on that day at Massa in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts, they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed this morning is number 31. You'll find the Psalter at the back of your book. <clears throat> Into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my stronghold. Guide me and lead me for your name's sake. Take me out of the net that they have laid secretly for me. For you are my strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. I put my trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy. For you have seen my affliction and known my soul in adversity. You have not shut me up in the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in an open place. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, my soul and my body also. For my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of my affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbours an object of dread to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they flee from me. I am forgotten like one that is dead out of mind. I have become like a broken vessel. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is on every side. They scheme together against me and plot to take my life. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. 
My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and save me for your mercy's sake. Lord, let me not be confounded, for I have called upon you. <clears throat> but let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence that speak against the righteous with arrogance, disdain and contempt. How abundant is your goodness, O Lord, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared in the sight of all for those who put their trust in you. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from those who slander them. You keep them safe in your refuge from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his steadfast love when I was as a city besieged. I had said in my alarm I have been cut off from the sight of your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my prayer when I cried out to you. Love the Lord, all you his servants, for the Lord repays, protects the faith, but repays to the full the proud. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait in hope for the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Scrolling past our first reading to the canticle, turning back in our books to a morning prayer on Friday in ordinary time, a song of humility. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up that we may live in his presence. <clears throat> let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. <clears throat> for loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. As you scroll back to the first reading, this is from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints. Jean-Baptiste Marie Vianney was born in Dardilly, near Lyon, in 1786, the son of a farmer, and he spent much of his childhood working as a shepherd on his father's farm. He had a little formal education, but at the age of 20, he began studying for the priesthood, which he found extremely difficult. Despite his poor academic performance, he was ordained in 1815, mainly because of his devotion and holiness. He served as assistant priest at Achille, and in 1818 was appointed curé or parish priest of the remote, unimportant village of ar en don From this backwater, his fame was to spread worldwide. His skills in preaching and spiritual counsel earned him a reputation as a discerning and wise priest. His visiting penitents soon numbered 300 a day. He would preach at 11 o'clock each morning and then spend up to 16 hours in the confessional. His love of God and his people ensured that he remained in R the rest of his life, despite a call to the religious life and many offers of promotions in the church. He died on this day in the year 1859. So, to our first Bible reading, Jeremiah 35. Jeremiah is um, the second of the major prophets after Isaiah. So if you're following the Holy Bible with both covenants in it, after um, Isaiah, you'll find Jeremiah. So turning to your, in your Bibles halfway through to the Psalms and Proverbs section of wisdom material, moving towards the back, uh, the first of the prophets is Isaiah, the second is Jeremiah. Once you've found Jeremiah, we need to find uh, chapter number 35, so that's the large number in the margin or at the head of the paragraph, chapter 35. We scroll back to it if we are following online. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, Go to the house of the Rechabites and speak with them and bring them to the house of the Lord into one of the chambers, then offer them wine to drink. So I took Jazaniah, son of Jeremiah, son of Habaziniah, and his brothers and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. I brought them to the house of the Lord into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, son of Igdalia, the man of God, which was near the chamber of the officials, above the chamber of Masaiah, son of Shalom, keeper of the threshold. 
Then I set before the Rechabites pitchers full of wine and cups. I said to them, Have some wine, but they answered, We will drink no wine, for our ancestor Jonadab, son of Rechab, commanded us, You shall never drink wine, neither you nor your children, nor shall you ever build a house or sow seed, nor shall you plant a vineyard or even own one, but you shall live in tents all your days, that you may live many days in the land where you reside. We have obeyed the charge of our ancestor Jonadab, son of Rechab, in all that he commanded us, to drink no wine all our days, ourselves, our wives, our sons, our daughters, and not to build houses to live in. We have no vineyard or field or seed, but we have lived in tents, and have obeyed and done all that our ancestor Jonadab commanded us. But when King Nebuchadrezzar of Babylon came up against the land, said, we said, Come, let us go up to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and the army of the Arameans. That is why we are living in Jerusalem. Then the words of the Lord came to Jeremiah, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, can you not learn a lesson and obey my word, says the Lord? The command has been carried out that Jonadab, son of Rechab, gave to his descendants to drink no wine, and they drink none to this day, for they have obeyed their ancestors' command. But I myself have spoken to you persistently, and you have not obeyed me. I have sent to you all my servants, the prophets, sending them persistently, saying, Turn now every one of you from your evil way and amend your doings, and do not go after other gods to serve them. And then you shall live in the land that I gave to you and your ancestors. But you did not incline your ear or obey me. The descendants of Jonadab, son of Rechab, have carried out the command that their ancestors gave them, but this people has not obeyed me. Therefore thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, I am going to bring on Judah and on all the inhabitants of Jerusalem every disaster that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken to them and they have not listened. I have called to them and they have not answered. But the house of the Rechabites, Jeremiah said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because you have obeyed the command of the your ancestor Jonadab, and kept all his precepts, and done all that he commanded you. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, son of Rechab, shall not lack a descendant to stand before me for all time. So, we've got some people who don't live in houses, and uh, they don't drink wine. So, uh, two things that make these people stand out, a bit like Jews not working on Saturday, or Muslims not working on Friday, or Christians, at least in some parts of the world, tending not to work on Sunday. Um, being circumcised, wearing a turban, is a mark of this people, whether it's to do with their ethnicity or their religion. One can tell that they are who they are because they don't live in houses and they don't drink. And uh, Jeremiah is told to invite them to the temple and ask them to drink. And they say they don't. And we've got this long explanation why. Because their uh, tribal leader, their clan master, they were Scottish. It would be Macduff or Anderson. MacDonald said don't drink. And so they haven't. And uh, Jeremiah uses this as an example. And he says to the people, his own people, God himself has told you how to behave and you still don't do it. Look at these people, learn from them. And then he blesses them to say that they will always exist as a people. <coughs> Um, and indeed, people with apparently with faith in God, I don't know if that is actually what that means, but certainly they will always be a people, they will always have descendants. And uh, it says stand before him, which sounds like um, there will be a portion of those people who will be Jewish. So, for us, reading this as Christians, this Jewish text, we can learn from gypsies, um, from people of the circus, people, uh, Roma, Irish heritage, people who run fun fairs, as long, alongside all those other people who move about and who aren't the same as us. Perhaps even that we put upon, that we despise, we ridicule, we mock, we put to death because they are different. Rather than doing that, if we hold to this scripture today, let us learn from them. It's only by God's grace that these people who used to live distant are now living amongst God's people. So Jeremiah can make this, no, learns about them and can make this comparison. He would not be able to do that if they had still been living in tents out in the countryside. But they come in for fear of the oppressor. So when we find ourselves compromised by climate breakdown, ecocide, um, total oppression and a lack of freedom to think under our current privileged leadership, we need to stick together and find friendships that we might not have known were there before and learn from others how they cope, that God may bless us and them. That's the other joy of this story. It's a circular promotion, development, mutual benefit <clears throat> from this 
inclusion and welcome and recognition of the value of diversity. Second Bible reading, James 4, from 13 to 5, 6. James is in the latter part of the Greek scripture, the Christian scriptures. So if you turn to the back of your Bible, if you've got both covenants there, you'll find Revelation, move back towards the beginning. And uh, you should find James in there fairly soon, five or so books in. To use an index if it doesn't fall open. Sometimes these are smaller letters on the funny pages, the sort of fine quality paper that uh, the print Bibles are printed in. It can sometimes flick across and we miss it. We're looking for the book of James, we're looking for the large number four at the head of the paragraph, chapter four, and we're looking for verse 13, small numbers in the text, verse 13. We're going on to chapter 5, verse 6. Scroll onto it if you're following online. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there doing business and making money, yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wishes, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it commits sin. Come now, you rich people, weep and wail for all the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotted and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted and their rust will be evidence against you and it will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure for the last days. Listen, the wages of the labourers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in pleasure. You have fattened your hearts on the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous one who does not resist you. Putting into context how short our lives are and how uh, ludicrous the idea is of compiling, collecting, compounding value and wealth in our name. You say tomorrow we'll go to such and such a town, do business, make money. You don't even know what tomorrow will bring you or a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead you ought to say, the Lord willing, Deus Valente, if God wills. And... Uh, if we hold that thought that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, only God knows, then actually we would be humbled rather than boasting with arrogance. If we know how we should live, but we don't live that way, then we are in error, we are in sin, to use uh, James's language. And then the second paragraph talks almost with an anger about how wealth is uh, detrimental to well-being, not only of those who have been oppressed to achieve it, but also those who have amassed that value uh, also. Again, it's sort of a negative spiral, whereas our first reading was a positive one. May God be merciful on those who um, oppress us and uh, prevent us from th thinking freely and uh, prevent us from earning a decent living and caring for and looking after our families being able to afford somewhere to live. It's all built into these strange political economic structures. It's not a given that houses have to be expen as expensive as they are. Well, the gold standard was uh, removed in 71. Houses were much cheaper when we still had a stock of uh, socially countable housing paid for through the rates. Housing was much cheaper. And, uh, it's our collective decision to tolerate, put up with, put money in the hands of those who are so rich they don't actually yield in cash. Their value is notional based on stocks and shares. So may God be merciful. To the responsory back in uh, morning prayer on Friday in ordinary time. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord, of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. To the Gospel Canticle. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. 
and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. <clears throat> In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Saviour sacrifice seal, three in one, one in three. We thank you for that uh, great transaction that established the covenant for us as church in your death on the cross, in your being raised up, in your being glorified, in your giving up your life that we may live, that you submitting to injustice, that we may experience equity and rule of law, that you became cast aside, that we may belong. And uh, we praise you and thank you for that. And we ask your blessing on all today who need to know the shadow of the cross falling across their path, that they may be redeemed, healed, set free, um, that they may be included and uh, provided for, that they may have a name and a uh, hope for today and tomorrow, a bright one indeed. World Council of Churches, prayers for the Republic of Congo, Gabon, Sao Tome and Principe, Principe, don't know how it's pronounced, apologies. Uh, we are thankful for healing from exploitative practices that began under colonial rule. And we pray for the witness of churches and other faith groups in the midst of the challenges faced by the peoples of these lands. From Christian Action Research and Education, we thank God that the United Kingdom law requires businesses with a turnover of 35 million to publish annual statements to explain what they're doing to tackle modern slavery in their supply chains. May this spread to other countries. Mm. We pray for other initiatives, including the Clear Initiative and uh, the excellent uh, police um, strategy in our county uh, to find and rescue the thousands of slaves, predominantly British and predominantly involved in criminality, in and around our towns and villages. From Green Christian. Where are we? There we go. Uh, Drax Group has secured development consent from the Scottish Government to build a 500 million pump storage hydro facility, which would be the first long duration storage plant to be constructed in the UK for 40 years, writes Matt Mace. The 500 million underground pump storage hydro plant will be located at Drax's existing Cruchan facility or Cruchan facility in Argyll, Scotland. Drax claims that long duration storage plants will be a crucial enabler in allowing more solar wind power to come online. Drax's chief executive, Will Gardner, said these plants play a critical role in stabilising the electricity system, helping to balance the supply and demand through restoring excess power from the national grid. When Scotland's wind turbines are generating more power than we need, Crookham steps in to store the renewable electricity so that it doesn't go to waste. So basically we've got a pump that uh, pumps water uphill uh, whilst, we are, whilst it's sunny, whilst the wind is blowing, and when the wind and the sun stops like a giant battery, kinetic battery, the water then flows the other way through the pump and it generates power. It makes less power than it uses, but it makes more money. And if it's renewable in the first instance, that doesn't matter quite so much. Um, the other is at Dunawick in uh, North Wales, a place with which I'm very familiar. So uh, we thank God for that investment. One of the few areas, I guess, where we do actually need significant capital to maintain renewable energy. But uh, I think I'm happy with that. The Anglican, Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our concern for the environment, and Pope Francis' prayer for creation includes the lines teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognise that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. Benefits prayer cycle, we pray on Fridays for our voluntary organisations. <coughs> so we do, we pray for our PCCs, that they will find the treasures that they need. Um, and uh, other personnel, none of our parishes have two wardens, for example. We pray for our Hasbro Volunteer Centre, Pear Tree Centre, 
the uh, Millennium Green people, the Electric Light Switch On people, the events group, the business group, the tourism group, uh, in and around the town. All those organisations that promote creativity, well-being, <clears throat> sanctuary, justice, environmental care, good business practice, self-support, dementia carers trust, etc. We thank God for them and for the way that they make this place so special. And we pray a blessing on them and on all that are coming together that will be towards the end is it, of this month or even the end of next for our uh, Creation Tide event. And we pray that that would be an opportunity to bless and celebrate all that uh, volunteers are doing in relation to the environment and indeed others, businesses and politicians um, in and around uh, our town and county. Pray for our people looking after our churches in the uh, St Michael group. Jane at St Michael Cookley, Jeanette at St Margaret's Heveringham, Emma at St Mary's Huntingfield, Lee and Ken at St Mary's Walpole. Yes, that's true, there are two wardens there. We pray for others on those PCCs, Secretary Treasurers, uh, the electoral roll congregation communities in those places. And uh, we've got electoral roll names for Cookley, uh, Roy, Robert, Katrina, Margaret, Mark, Nicola, Valerie, Robert, Joanna, Susan, Alan, Dooney, uh, Huntingfield, David, Jenny, Susan, David, Marion, Patrick, Sally, Anne, Roger, Jackie, Judith, Barry, Jacqueline, Jane, Tony, Dooney, Sue. And uh, there's an enormous list going to turn up for having a any minute. But we pray for those who volunteer there in those places. May they be inspired, uh, may they be inspiring as they look to the future of those buildings as community centres um, with a uh, significant faith contribution to make a component. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Upon the education, give us the right to ask for 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 the right Chukotelum <laughs> Thank <laughs> For Friday morning, gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.